Well, it is February the 17th. It's about 8 a.m. And if things go my way today, I'll get my jobs done for the day and hopefully get this video out on YouTube by tonight. Hopefully early. It's late this evening. We'll wait and see what happens. So what I'm doing today, I'm going over to the drive-in theater, which is part of a large farm that I do a lot of my sawing and timber harvesting at. And I'm sawing up some white oak today and it's some logs that I actually forgot I had on the ground. I cut them a little over a year ago and I did a video on that. That was my very first video actually for this channel called uh, One Man Logging. If you've not seen that, I'll put a link up here. If you want to go back and watch that one, that was my first video ever. Uh, the quality is pretty poor on it, but it turned out okay as my first one. What I'm doing with that white oak, I believe there's two of them that are pretty nice and straight. I'm, I'm hopefully I'll get to quarter saw both of those. But the rest of them I'm going to be sawing up for uh, two different customers. One guy needs some uh, barn siding on a barn he's rebuilding, and, and the other one's uh, for the landowner over here, and uh, he is rebuilding uh, one of his barns as well, doing some additions to it, needs some siding for it. So I think I've got about 600 board feet total and all the timber on the ground right now. A little chilly out here this morning. Upper 20s it says. Feels a little colder than that. Here's the lineup for today, and I forgot about this one. This is an ash right here in front, and it's been on the ground for a good while. I'll be surprised if we get a lot of good wood out of it, but you never know. We're going to try it anyways. So we've got ash and four white oak right behind it, about 600 feet of white oak timber and this one little ash log here. First white oak here that we'll cut after the ash is, is uh, going to be nothing but barn siding. It's got a lot of defects in it. It's got a significant sweep on the very end and the pith is not straight all the way through the log. So it's not a good candidate for quarter sawing either. Now this second one here, I'm gonna to try to quarter saw the pith right here in the middle, which is the very uh, center of the tree, runs pretty parallel through the entire piece of timber here. So we should be able to quarter saw this. But you can see this black staining right here on the end, and I'll focus in so you can see it better. Whenever you see a log and you see this odd stains on the end of it, it's usually black and obvious uh, discoloration to the natural color of the wood. That's usually going to mean there's metal in there. And uh, I think I remember seeing a piece of barbed wire right here where I made the cut on this log. And uh, so what we'll do, I'll come back a few inches here, past this wedge cut here, use a chainsaw and cut this part off, and uh, hopefully that staining will be will be gone at that point. Because I cut this about uh, two foot up from the from the base of the tree, so hopefully that will get rid of this metal, and the rest of it will be clear. So that's what that means when you see this black staining here. And uh, any of you guys thinking about getting into saw milling and stuff, if you ever have somebody bring you a log try to sell you one and it's got this black staining in it right here there's metal in it so that's going to really make a big factor in considering what you're going to pay for it even if you're going to buy it or not because when you hit metal with these blades it's it's a bad day it's not a, it's not a uh, terrible day it doesn't stop you from sawing but usually that means the blade comes off and you have to resharpen it and that's seven or eight dollars and then you got to worry about being more metal in the tree so you never know about them. But that's what that means. You see that staining on there. And these two on the back here are some more low grade white oak. We'll be cutting that into some barn wood. And I'm going to try to take the pith and get some four by fours out of them to make some runners up here. Because we got a lot of timber here to cut and saw up. I mean, there's probably 50,000 feet of white oak here to harvest. So I'm going to be back and forth here for a long time. And uh, I'm going to try maybe some four by fours eight foot long to set up as runners down through here in front of the mill to stage uh, timber on for the future another thing here if you're wondering what this is this is a hookaroon it's made by law bride that's the same company it makes the cant hooks that i use they make great products they also make a uh, 
ATV arch for hauling logs. And I have one of those also. I'm gonna have to do a video on that pretty soon. And I thought about that the other day. I just hauled it home from another location. And uh, that's something I've not even showed on this channel yet is the log arch. But anyways, all this is is pretty much just a hook here at the end of this pole. And uh, these are all made in the USA by Logrite. This ain't no sponsorship. I'm not getting nothing from them. They just make good stuff. And uh, this is for getting firewood or getting slabs. It's really a bat saver. You don't have to bend over. You can take that point, and drive it in there to pull things to you on the mill. It's a great tool to have. Now we've not showed any ash on this channel yet and uh, it's pretty plain. The grain's not really, not a lot going on with it. It's kind of a lighter color wood. It's a good hardwood though. Good for uh, tool handles and uh, table tops and workbench tops also because it's a very hard wood. Density's really good in it. But uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna slab this at eight quarter and because uh, two inches uh, two inches thick for ash is really what's sought after for workbench tops and stuff like that. I, I might cut it at uh, two inches and a quarter thick so to dry down to eight quarter probably better. But anyways, there's some crotch figure right here because I got I remember cutting this and leaving it out where, where it splayed right here out. And I've never done a, a ash log with any kind of crotch in it, so I don't know if there's going to be any nice figure in this crotch area or just be just plain so who knows so this will be a first for me so we're going to open this one up and see how it goes Some are clear and some are worn And there are times you sense big changes You might have to break the vow that you swore And there were times you didn't lift a finger When you might have changed the world Now that you've become a believer You're on your knees Apologies are heard
times you see faces They remind you of your own They never leave behind the traces of Who they are Or if they'll stand alone When a voice says, come together And they make a perfect tone 